we have a hook in the vise so that we can tie a damsel fly. Um, fished a lot of damsels last year and it seems like when the fish are king on damsel nymphs like crazy right right near the surface they're super super picky and so um, I wanted to create something that didn't have any additional weight to it and uh, maybe was hatch matchy enough to get them to eat it but still simple enough to tie that I didn't want to pull my hair out when I tied them so um, we'll just uh, give it a go first of all we have a Daiichi 1710 in the vise this is a size 12 um, damsels that we fish are probably mostly 12s and 10s and if anything I'd go smaller to like a 14 which is really freaking small for a damsel but anyway we're gonna start tying this and the first thing we're gonna do is take some like 30 pound um, Maxima Chameleon or if you go and buy the the Cajun line at Bass Pro or Cabela's or over down to the Hualmorts um, you can find red line so I like to use red on these eyes it might even look cool a chartreuse eyes too so again whoops sorry poop colored lighter this is the poop colored lighter with the faceless monkey I think that's what, uh, what that is right so Amazon poop colored lighter with the faceless monkey and you'll find the right lighter so I'm just gonna singe both ends of these until they ball up just like that so I'll wait for those to cool just a little bit. Curtis just brought up a good point. You probably heard it, but you could use amnesia for this too. We'll list it in the tutorial. So there. This is brought to you by Diet Dr. Pepper. We're trying to get that YouTube money, cuz. All right, so I'm going to figure eight that eye in place and if anything, I like the eyes to be a little bit more buggy than you'd think. Because if you've ever had damsels like crawl up on you and, and do their thing, hatch out, you notice that their eyes are mega buggy. And who knows, that could be a feature that the, the fish key on. So there we go. Eyes. The rest of this fly is pretty simple. Um... I'm going to use Premium Bugaboo um, from Nature Spirit in Olive. This is a really cool material, mostly because it's so shiny. It's got a lot of sheen to it. Why do they call it sheen when they could just say shine? The English language pisses me off. For those of you in Alabama, it's the same thing, sheen and shine. So. This stuff sparses up in the water really well. So I'm just going to take a little clump of feathers. And I'll tie that in. Just like that. And then I'll take that clump, wrap forward, and just tie that whole thing down. Alright. We should probably just fish it like that. That's money. Look at that thing. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some root beer sparkle braid and I'll tie that in up by the eyes as well. And then I took some squirrel and mixed it with brown olive or olive brown uh, ice dub. And we have a video on how to how to do that. All right, so go and watch our blood leech video. If you have to, we show how to blend this dub. And also we have a, a video on how to blend your own squirrel. But anyway, this dubbing, which is kind of a nice light olive, is actually fluorescent chartreuse dub. And so when that uh, the darker under fur from the squirrel gets mixed in with the lighter tip fibers it kind of goes dark and here's the cool thing about it is 
even though it's a natural material, it really fluoresces well because it's dyed with that fluorescent dub or the dye. So if you're into that, this is a good one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this dub. I'm going to make a really thin dubbing noodle on the thread. Just like that. And I'm going to take that and just wrap that forward up the body. About to right there. And then I'll take that sparkle braid and I'll pull it kind of tight and I'll wrap it the opposite way up the body. So once that's all tied in, I'm going to give it a little tiny brush out so that those segments really kind of show through, but it's just a really sparse body. Okay, so for the hackle on this, this is actually yellow, or grizzly dyed yellow whiting hen saddle. And the reason I chose yellow is because it kind of stands out a little bit more from the, the chartreuse. And we're just going to put a few fibers on there. So it's not really going to look super yellow once you get it against the fly. All right. So here is the feather. And keep in mind that it's facing me. Or maybe the easier way to, to do it is the, the back of the feather is facing you. So the front of the, or the shiny side of the feather is facing me. And I'm going to take these fibers that are up toward the eye of the, of the fly and I'll strip those off. So I just have half the fibers and when I start wrapping it, it will naturally lay down the fibers that are still on the stem nicely. Now watch, I'll do it and it will fall apart and then I'll have to swear and then you'll bleep it out. Okay, so that's tied in. I'm going to use some fancy hackle pliers for this one. And I'm just going to do about two turns of this. Boom, right there. Okay, so you can see we have a very sparse hackle and because I stripped half of it off, it really spaces out those fibers well. And that's gonna, that's gonna move in the water without getting matted down. Okay, so now, instead of putting like a wing case or any of that stuff on there, I'm just going to take more of the dub and make another thin dubbing noodle. I'll put a few turns right in front of those wraps, and then I'll figure eight the head, and you can see those, those eyes poke out nicely. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more to form the head. So a little red hot spot. And then I'll come in here and kind of tease the, the fibers out of the hackle mostly. It's not going to matter because once it hits the water it will it will pick out nicely. Anyway, there is the squirrel damsel.